Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a nice sunny Sunday morning with good weather. Uh, unfortunately, we can't fly, uh, but flying stories have something exciting for you today. We have a special guest here, Alish Tapa from Nepal Acro team, and he'll be discussing all about reserves and reserve deployments today. So don't take this session as an inspiration to deploy more reserves. Be safe and listen to the session carefully. So uh, saying about Alish, uh, Alish is an acro pilot, an SIV and an acro instructor, a tandem and an XC pilot, and also a skydiver. He started flying at a very young age of 16 and even started acrobatics uh, just three months of flying at age of 16 soon after he started. Uh, he's one of the youngest pilot in Nepal to do extreme maneuvers like tumbling and infinity. And uh, he is a winner of 2013 Acrocom at Nepal, second runner up at Tandem Exicom. He also has uh, experience in being uh, with judging and organizing committee for several national and international competitions. Uh, in his uh, personal life, he's currently pursuing his uh, master, master's in business, MBA. Uh, also, th those who know him close, uh, know him as a very friendly, uh, inspiring and humble personality. So I welcome Alish Thapa to this session. Welcome Alish. And Hello. You. Namaste. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Klein John and uh, Mr. Badri sir for organizing this platform for sharing all the experience that people have. And to all my pilots over here going live, uh, it's an honor and privilege for me to be here today to share some of my knowledge and experiences between you all. I'm here not only to share my knowledge and experience, but also to motivate the new coming youth, new pilots, young pilots especially, uh, who are training and they're joining uh, different kind of competition or training themselves. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here for that. And I, I'm sure if you practice paragliding properly, in a safety way, and, uh, and you can take it, take the paragliding in Asia into new level. Thank you. Uh, today, in this session, I'll be talking about rescue, its importance, and rescue deployment procedure. So, uh, I'll begin with my session. Yeah, we can find uh, we can find various types of reserve in the market. Some of them might be certified. Most of them are certified, actually. And we can also find some of the uncertified reserve, which were old during the times. <clears throat> but there are several things that we have to look after a reserve parachute when purchasing a reserve parachute. I know it's a long-term investment for a pilot to purchase a reserve parachute. So in order to buy a reserve parachute, you have to look uh, different characteristic of a reserve parachute. The first characteristic I will mention you is to uh, is to get a certified reserve. It should be EN certified reserve. Why? Because under EN certification, uh, European norms focus on pilot with least experience, ensuring the maximum level of safety. In context of reserve, it should fulfill the characteristics in order to get certified. So it should be on a certain test. It should go on a certain test. It, uh, the reserve parachute we buy goes under SOC test and flight test. During the SOC test, it is uh, dropped from a helicopter, okay, uh, with a 15 meter per second speed. And flight test, they will check after the opening test, that should be less than four seconds. Sync test, it should be minimum of 5.5 meters per second and stability test. <clears throat> the, the reserve should not move 30 degree more than its vertical axis and size and weight. And they, there comes the size where they, there are many sizes of reserve now, ultralight, light, and they are decided by the EN, certifica uh, EN certification. Okay. And uh, now, it's us to decide what kind of reserve we want. There are different types of reserve and different model of reserve. And uh, it's us to decide what kind of reserve we want. There are several types of reserve in the market. So first thing, we can find pull down apex, which we call it a round reserve. 
square reserve, round square reserve. They're, they're cheaper in a way and easier to pack. You know, uh, I'll not go much towards the types of reserve because some more classes are coming from many instructors about the types of reserve. And there are triangular reserve, which we call it Rogallo. And uh, you can steer it and choose the direction where to land. And next one is a rampier, rampier parasite. It's also called base system. The people are using uh, base system in order to uh, land properly when they're training above the ground, especially acrobatic pilots, okay? But this has some disadvantage also. They're expensive. And if you fall inside the lines, you cannot open this kind of reserve, okay? So depending upon our purchasing power, here comes the time to buy a reserve parachute now. And also we check our label, what kind of reserve is suitable for us. And uh, we also go towards uh, what size is better for us, okay? We must take care, take in concern about the size, our label, and if it is certified or not. And we can choose different types of reserve. So now let's go towards a real reserve deployment procedure, okay? Mm, just to start with, during our flying career, we have to pass through some extreme situation, extreme situation like asymmetric collapse, side collapse, auto rotation, twist, and several things. And the thing is we might end up deploying the reserve one day. It, it might happen, it, it's a bit of fact, you know, uh, it might happen to various pilot. So we must be aware of this fact and get mentally prepared in what kind of situation we're going to deploy the reserve. So, First thing is decision-making procedure in re, uh, rescue deployment procedure. Okay, first thing to take in concern is decision-making procedure. So our, on this, I will talk about uh, talk for beginner pilots, intermediate pilot, and intermediate pilots. Okay, it's more helpful for them. I'll try to cover all the pilots. So I'll start with one example. I was flying tandem and uh, there was one new glider. He was my brother, okay, he was flying near to me and uh, he had a big turbulent. He got a symmetric collapse, went into twist and auto rotation. He was very close to the ground. He was very close to the ground and he deploys his reserve and just the second he land on the ground, he didn't hurt, itself, uh, hurt himself. And let me go with next example. <clears throat> I was flying in a tandem again, and there was next guy who was flying just in front of me. He was high, he was very high, and he deployed his reserve. And uh, sorry, he didn't deploy his reserve, he was in the auto rotation. And once he, he went to the auto rotation, he tried to fight with it to recover from it. But the ground was coming closer. As we know in paragliding, the limit is the ground. Okay, ground was uh, coming closer and he did not deploy his reserve and uh, he ended up costing his life. I'm just making a uh, comparison between these two examples, the case one where he deployed the reserve in low altitude and next one uh, when he did not res uh, deploy the reserve, even he had a height because of lack of decision making process. If we see the stats, 70%, uh, more than 70% of the accident are caused because of lack of decision-making process. Okay, decision-making process. Uh, if we say some of the pilots, if we don't make proper decision and proper time, we might end up uh, giving our life. So this time I'll talk about some cases that you must deploy your reserve, uh, reserve parasite. The first thing, is permanent loss of control. It means if you lose your control over the glider permanently that you cannot uh, control your glider at all. It means you have to throw your reserve. The first thing, first example is twisted lock spiral. If you get a twist and you are in a deep spiral situation, then it's, just, it's the time that you need to throw the reserve parasite. If you have a, uh, Cravat, 
if you know the cravat, if the, the tip of the glider goes inside the line and it is stopped over there, it's a cravat. And if we get a cravat and it doesn't open, and it's time to throw the reserve. One of the uh, second situation, pull, stall, or spin with riser twist. If you get a twist during your stalls or uh, spin, then it's the time to throw the reserve. And uh, if you are in line contact, if you fall inside the lines, or if you come into the glider, this is the situation you must throw the reserve. Because I'm sure if you don't throw it, you'll cost giving your life. The cost is very expensive. Okay. And papillon. Uh, if the papillon, papillon is a situation when the line, uh, one line goes above the glider. It's like a line over because of some big asymmetric collapse or collapses, we can get a papillon. And uh, collision, uh, if we collide with each other, it's very dangerous situation because uh, one of my friends, it's my brother, he's coming to take a session. Uh, his name is Colin Popa. Just to make an example for collision, uh, we were out for a D-back jump uh, with Subhas, Colin, and me. And we went for D-back jump and Subhas jump. When he dropped, the Colin started to make helicopter in his tandem. Once he started to make helicopter in his tandem, then the uh, other pilot, one pilot come doing a rodeo around the helicopter tried to circle around the helicopter and he went inside the line, tandem guy. And what happened is like, Colin deployed his razor parachute very fast. And the other guy took some time and his line were over his head, all around his head. And he could not uh, breathe properly, you know, for 10 seconds. And then the other guy opened the reserve and still the Colin had uh, some of the lines and he, he was hurt really badly at that time. I remember this. So if he had made a proper decision, he will not uh, fail. Uh, he will not have this kind of problem. So making a decision is a complex, complex process. So if you have a permanent loss of control, you must deploy the reserve. And second one here, we come for temporary loss of control. It means... Let's say uh, uh, Mr. A pilot have enough experience to deal with different kind of uh, situation like stalls, grab at, he knows how to open it. But the thing is, he don't have sufficient height for opening the reserve parachute. Okay, if he don't have sufficient height for opening the reserve parachute, then he must deploy, uh, sorry, uh, sufficient height for, uh, sufficient height to make the grab at go away and deal with the situation, but there's not enough height. This is the time where he should uh, deploy the reserve. But if he don't deploy the reserve at this time, then it's, it's a bad situation again. He end up in big incident. Same like the guy, the first example I gave, when the guy threw the reserve parachute during his auto rotation and opened right before the ground come, one second before, that was the time he saved his life. And the time really matters for paragliding pilot, even millisecond matters when it's about the, when it's about deploying the reserve and uh, saving our life. That's the value of time that we should consider, you know? And then the next thing, the third thing is panic, fear, or any kind of situation that make a pilot unable to uh, control the paraglider. Let's say, some or either I, I do believe that we, do, we all pilots don't have same kind of label. So some of the beginner pilots, when they make a spiral dive in the initial phase, they, they get logged out. They get unconscious, right? It's a bitter truth. And they don't know what to do. It's very easy, we know, but you just counteract on the outside. But the thing is, they don't know what to do. And they end up uh, hitting the ground like a rock. But at this time, you must deploy the reserve parachute. If you reserve, if you deploy the reserve parachute, they will fall so slowly that even our landing these days are not uh, safer than the reserve parachute that, uh, that lands on the ground, right? And uh, make sure when you're deploying the reserve parachute, you have to check your height every time. 
So there comes a three situation, permanent loss of control, temporary loss of control, when uh, there is insufficient height, but uh, you know how to counteract, but because of the height, you have to deploy your reserve. There is third situation, panic, fear, or any other kind of situation. This is the time where you should deploy the reserve parasite. So I would like to open the question and answer session. Right after this, uh, I will go after stall and non-stall best situation for deploying the reserve parasite. Please. Cool. Uh, very well explained, Alish. Uh, that was uh, excellently explained about all the situations of making the decision. And this is, you know, usually the question, uh, the, the question among many pilots, you know, when to deploy and they don't know it, when to deploy or not, when not to deploy. And uh, usually in SIVs, there is always an instructor to say deploy if it goes wrong. And uh, now these are the situation uh, it is very well explained so saying about that i'm opening this uh, for the q a session uh, let me you can come uh, in video and wave your hand or put your name in chat and we will uh, answer one by one let me unmute you all. Bubbles. i'm muting you all again uh, just message you if you have any questions just uh, ping in the chat room you can also raise the hands i can see is there any questions for you guys i guess uh... yeah manoj shetty I'm on manoj mute. and guru yeah okay so let me unmute him Manoj, uh, you can come in video. I have unmuted you. You can ask your question, Manoj. Yeah, thanks, Claire. I mean, uh, my question is, uh, uh, with regards to reserve, uh, what is your take in carrying uh, two reserves? I mean, if you're a cross-country pilot, uh, what's your take on, uh, should, uh, is one reserve good enough? Did you get my question? Yeah, I can. I got uh, your question. So just to explain your question, uh, it's good to have one reserve than not having none of the reserve because we can see many pilots in the market that they're not even having the reserve. And some of the pilots, they are having the old reserve. But if you talk about having two reserve, we are just increasing the level of safety, safety aspect. If because we can find many situations that uh, if we see some kind of situation in the YouTube channels or some videos that the reserve doesn't deploy right after it, uh, it's uh, open, you know, and it goes and stuck inside the lines. At that time, we could not open the reserve because there's a reserve failure. And if we have two reserves, then we can use either of the reserve and we deploy both the reserve if one doesn't work, then there is a next reserve that will work for sure. And if it doesn't work, then it's, you, we have to pray for God, you know. But we try to open it anyway. But the thing is, the, we are just increasing the level of safety. If one, one reserve doesn't work, there's a chance that another reserve will work. So we take two reserves during our practice. Is that okay? Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Uh... Next, we have uh, Guru Prasad in uh, queue. Guru, can you come online in video? Let me unmute him. Uh, just a second, guys. Sorry. Guru, uh, you are unmuted. You can start speaking, please. Okay, you just mentioned regarding a situation where we have a cravat and yes. uh, it is advisable to throw reserve during a cravat. But uh, considering a situation where we find there is a, a plenty of safe ground for us to land and uh, we see that uh, we can, uh, we are able to steer the glider by weight shifting uh, and uh, lowering our height. And is, is even in that situation, do you uh, advise practice in throwing a reserve or uh, uh, go for a landing where you can actually balance uh, your by your body weight and go down safely. Okay, I uh, got that question. So 
at this situation, the, there, there come the decision-making process again. Okay, you are a pilot and we have to decide by ourselves looking at the descent rate of the glider. If you see the descent rate of the glider is really more and increasing in a rapid manner or it's taking you to the auto rotation and you cannot control your uh, cravat, then this is the time where you should deploy your reserve. But again, if you can control with your label and you can go and land by yourself with the cravat, it's fine. You can do it. Yeah. It all depends upon the level of pilot again. Okay. Different pilot have different level. So it's better to t make a decision by yourself. Okay. Under this situation, if you have a prop, small crab bat and you can go and land, go and land. If there's a big crab bat and you cannot control it, take you to the auto rotation. It's trying to spin. Your glider is trying to spin then it's, it's the time where you should uh, throw the reserve, right? Thank you. Uh, does that answer your question, Guru? Uh, yeah, I got the answer, thank you. Okay, cool. Cool. Uh, so guys, just a reminder, uh, ask questions, uh, you know, specifically covered to the sections, which was uh, the decision making. And we have a lot of, you know, a couple of uh, sections to co cover, which is mainly about assessment, deployment, etc., which Ali should be covering. So ask questions uh, specifically to the sections. And at the end, towards the end, we can ask, you know, more questions covering a lot of things. So uh, Bhushan, you are next. This will be the last question here. And uh, we will go ahead with the next uh, next. And um, let me unmute Bhushan. Are you able to speak, Bhushan? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Alish, my question was uh, about uh, decision making of throwing the reserve uh, when we have an asymmetric riser twist and uh, the glider is, uh, you know, going out of control and going into a spiral, but uh, it also has a tendency of going into a sack because it has a mild cravat. So uh, how do you approach uh, throwing a reserve in this situation? Uh, first of all, trying to correct it or throwing, a, uh, throwing the reserve while it's in spiral or waiting for it to go into sack? Okay, mm, got that. Okay, normally uh, I was going to talk this situation on the assessment process. It's about the height analysis, okay? Uh, the thing is at white, what height you are in? If you are 1,000 meters higher than the ground, what you will do? If you are 200 meters closer to the ground, what will you do? If you are 1,000 meters higher above the ground level, then obviously we try to open it, right? Because we have enough height from the ground. Again, the, higher, the ground is the limit. So we can, uh, we can just stay over there and try to think right now. And we can make a mental analysis right now. Okay, the thing is, if you are high at 1,000 meters, then you can stay there. Uh, sorry, uh, if you are 1,000 meters high, then you can try to fight with the glider and try to open it, the cravat, if you have the proper level, okay? And if you are closer to the ground, again, I said you're going to second, second point, temporary loss of control, and if you cannot, you know how to open it, and but because of the height analysis, you cannot throw the, uh, you cannot open the cravat, then it means you have to deploy the reserve. Is that okay? Uh, yes, that answers for now. I think uh, you will talk yeah. more about this uh, in the assessment area also. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Cool, guys. So uh, we will move ahead to the next session. Alish, you can carry on the Q&A, uh, the painting Q&A. We can take it in next uh, sessions. So, yeah. Please so start. normally I was going to talk about the height now, okay, uh, for assessment process. The second, second point is about the assessment. We must judge at what height we are in. So the thing is, if you are higher 1,000 meters above the ground and uh, we get auto rotation, then we try to counteract and we try to open the glider, you know. But if you are really, let's say, if you are flying cross country, especially, and you're really close to the ground, 200 meters the ground, and there's a big uh, asymmetric collapse, and it starts to take you to the auto rotation, and you know that you can open this cravat, but the thing is, you don't have sufficient height to open the cravat, then it means this is the time where you should deploy your reserve. 
is a decision making process again okay you make sure that at this time you deploy your reserve and if you are at 1000 meter you have to try to open by contracting on the other side keeping your body weight shift on the other side right but if you see the situation 1000 meters you fall inside the lines or cannot be then it means this is the time that uh, assessing the level of uh, risk we must deploy the reserve this is a situation we have to re uh, deploy our reserve <clears throat> there are many things like uh, broken lines if the line start to break puff out poof 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 it go it start to go away then what to do we have to deploy the reserve because if we wait until the glider start into go into complete failure then there comes a problem that the descent rate will be higher and if you remember the en certification they make a sock test if we, if it is more than 40 meter per second then we might uh, end up blasting our reserve the reserve will not work again so make sure that you consider this kind of thing even for beginner pilots we might have a very hard situation and again i want uh, i want to recommend sib before you try this okay you are not going to try this by yourself make sure you are under uh, instructor instructor supervision here we are just sharing the information and flying stories okay uh, i would like to add my my example i was i was uh, above the lake I, I always train above the lake okay and uh, i pull i was going to pull tumbling and i end up in making big mag twist it was a spin and i fall really close to the lines yeah the lines were over my body and i immediately throw up the reserve because i knew that the descent rate will increase very fast, right? The descent rate will increase very fast. So it was the situation that I had to deploy my reserve parachute. And some of the, some of the times I was right training above the lake and yeah, I did not deploy the reserve parachute and went into full stall because I knew that going into the water with the full stall will not affect uh, anything over me. So, just going on this basis, we have to deploy a reserve parachute in different situations. So we have a stall based situation where the angle of attack is negative, right? And if we try to throw the reserve at this time by releasing our hand, then what happens? The glider is in stall and it will suit because there is so much energy if we release the hand and we might fall inside the glider. So during the stall based situation, make sure you're taking both the brakes in one hand or also you can use one of the brakes really down and you try to deploy the reserve because if, we, if you release the handles and try to find the reserve, then you'll, you might fall inside the lines. So make sure this, this is your part of decision making process. If there comes the time where you have to throw your reserve during your stall best, like twisted uh, stall, there is a twist and you are in a stall and you have to throw the reserve. Yeah, you have to keep both the brakes in one hand and deploy the reserve. Just to add one example over here, there was my friend. Uh, he was training for infinity tumbling in Nepal. Okay, he was one of my very good friends. And uh, he went to make uh, tumbling and he made a tumbling and he made a stall exit. He had a big twist and he need to deploy the reserve. He has a base system harness where there is a cutaway handle. You have to pull it and you just deploy the other parachute. But the thing is, he released both of his brake and tried to find the handle. Till then, the glider suit and he went inside the glider. And right now, we don't have him. And uh, he cost his life during this period, okay? So make sure when you're like really training or doing something, make this in your mind because this is the situation that we will have in our flying career for sure. Sooner or later, I wish never, but sooner or later we can have this kind of situation, okay? And the next situation is flying situation. It means that you have a big massive auto rotation and you cannot control by yourself. 
Okay, you cannot control it anymore. It's it's gone, and then you have to, uh, then you have to throw the reserve. So what 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 you can do? You can just let go your hand. You cast the handle and throw. And the problem right now is catching the handle. If you see many pilots, they even don't know where their rescue handle is. Right? The thing is, we just look our reserve parasol during our flight and we make this practice for every session of flight, okay? You just look the rescue handle, try to grab it. Just, just grab it and feel the reserve handle. Make sure it is automatic. When you try to reserve handle, you just cast the reserve handle and feel it. You, you must feel it, not look, because the time when we have to deploy the reserve, we are in such a stressful situation that we don't even know where to look for it. But once we have the feeling, we just, our hand, it will go automatically over there in our reserve handle line. We are ready to throw the reserve. Okay, make sure that you practice this during your flight. Make sure you just touch your reserve handle. Okay, I am focusing over here. Okay, thank you. Again, uh, going towards flying in a normal situation, like a spiral, locked spiral, or auto rotation, you can just try to catch your reserve handle and try to deploy it. Okay, you try to deploy it as fast as possible, depending upon your altitude. If you need to uh, counteract and try to open the crab at or spiral live or twist, it's up to you. It's your decision, depending upon your level. But the thing is, you must deploy the reserve when it's the time. Okay, so uh, maybe we can open the question and session. Uh, yeah, cool, uh, cool, Alish. Uh, valid points, and uh, you know, uh, especially while deploying reserve in these different uh, situations, stalls or uh, in auto rotation, uh, can you give an idea about uh, where to throw the reserve? You know, sometimes the reserve can go into the wing, and especially in case of auto rotation, you're circling down. So, any any take on that? Yeah, normally on this situation, we are uh, normally I was supposed to talk in opening part, but the thing is, okay, this is also a good question. The thing is, during the auto rotation, if you are in the auto rotation or lockdown spiral situation, the we find that in hundred cases of auto rotation, only twenty or twenty five percent of the reserves were deployed properly. Otherwise, it will go inside inside the line and it get stopped. If you see most of the videos in YouTube, also you can find it. But the thing is to throw the reserve at the situation of auto rotation or any kind of rotation situation, you can throw the reserve at the side of a trailing edge where there is a empty space. So the uh, reserve will get airflow and it will open, okay? And uh, during the spin situation, we have to throw on the opposite side where there is a reserve, uh, where there is a spin. Where there's a spin, we have to throw on the opposite side of spin. And we should throw it more harder during the spin because uh, spin is very slow and uh, it takes some time to open the reserve. Otherwise, even you throw the reserve, the um, reserve is hang hanging down just below the pilot. Sometimes you can find this kind of situation. Yeah, And the most important thing is to deploy. If you don't know where to throw and what to do, just deploy it, pull it and throw it as far as is possible and you save your life. Excellent, excellent. So yeah. we have uh, Leshman in queue. Uh, let me open, uh, unmute Leshman. Uh, Leshman, you're unmuted, you can go ahead. Uh, Alice, uh, my question is, uh, if you are flying in mountain area, if, yes. you, are, if, if you have a, a rugalo uh, par uh, parachute, if you throw, how accurate uh, the Rugalo is you land in the spot area? Okay, got that question. Yeah. Uh, just to answer you, it all depends upon the wind flow. Okay, Rugalo, it's easy to get drift. According to my analysis, it's, if there is a strong wind, you can drift easily with the Rugalo. The precision is not always correct with the Rugalo. We cannot make actual precision uh, with the Rugalo. So it all depends where you throw because here comes a situation 
the box if we talk about the box uh, is a imaginary uh, circle where we practice our maneuvers and uh, during cross country flying if you are you might end up anywhere because there might be power lines there might be uh, trees or somewhere else but if you throw the reserve at this situation if you are practicing acro we practice above a box so we, i'm sure that when i throw the reserve i will land somewhere near to this place of my spot and second thing during the cross country flight it's it's very hard to predict because we don't know when we throw the reserve right and i will say that if you have enough height you can go to the point where you want to land but if you have low height and if there is a strong wind uh, blowing then it's very hard to reach to that point with the rogallo is that okay um dashman does that answers your question yeah it's okay it's okay okay yeah, cool okay. next we have uh, ajit in queue ajit go ahead. Uh, yeah am i unmute are you unmuted me yeah we can hear you ajit uh, yeah my question is while after opening the reserve what is the descent speed means is it possible to land on the ground plain ground at the from say 500 meters or 700 meters from the ground yes it's possible to land on the uh, flat ground with the rogallo so what will be the descent rate means can we save our legs or not uh you normally it's very hard to stay on your legs okay even if you try to flare the reserve parachute it's not working the rogallo is not working if you try to break it it's not working at all so normally it's better to make some roll after you land so the impact will be all all in all of your body you know not just in your legs it's so better, better to, to fall down better to keep your legs tucked inside or uh, can leave it outside and take you it can, uh, full blast you can, on the legs you can keep it in front and get ready for plf you know parachute okay. landing fall yeah i understand yeah? yeah you know this right yeah i got my answer thank you thank you cool all right uh i guess we don't have any more questions so uh, or we can take the questions at the end and more important topics are coming ahead so go ahead uh, alish so number third point will go after the third point is deployment now the situation we know what in what situation we have to deploy our reserve parachute so how the deployment is done we have to grab our handle pull strongly outside especially when you are pulling make sure you're not pulling up like this make sure you're pulling at the side because we have some mechanical advantage you know uh, when it uh, it's straight and after that you can deploy the reserve now the deploy deployment of reserve is done in two ways so first thing is to take out the reserve and second thing is to throw as far as possible but here comes uh, there is controversy among many pilots that some pilots uh, tend to deploy the reserve by swinging they bring it back and throw as far as possible and some of them want to deploy a reserve right from the moment they take it out it, it's one move you know take it out and throw just throw it there is a there is a controversy between them but the thing is there is advantage and disadvantage for both the things the advantage of uh, swinging it back is you have more force to throw it as far as possible and from here there is less force but the thing is when you are swinging back the reserve might open in your in your harness itself and it might end up not working so we have to take care of this thing it's you to decide which kind of way you like to throw for me personally i would like to throw it in one move i'll take it out and throw it as far as possible very fast okay now i don't want the lines going messing up around my harness and uh, once we throw the reserve will open okay if the reserve will open the thing is we have to get ready uh, get ready for the disabling the paraglider but before disabling the paraglider once we throw the reserve the situation comes that the reserve is not open so what we can do we can cast the bridle in your hand in our hand and try to shake it and try to open it 
if it works, if it opens. Because the thing is, uh, we can see many pilots that are not packing their reserve on time. It should be repacked on every six months. But because of that, there's a humidity and the rubber start to stick. And the thing is, we cannot open it because the rubber, uh, the lines are hanging on the reserve. Okay. Uh, so after, after you try to open it, if the reserve opens, it's fine. If it doesn't open, then pray for God. Right. Uh, once it opens, the most important thing is to disable our paraglider because the reserve here, once open, it wants to fly. And even the paraglider wants to fly. They are more made to fly. And they are fighting between each other. They're, there's a mirror effect. So we must make sure that we have to... Uh, we have to take this mirror effect away. So for this, we can make a wrap in our hand and try to stall our canopy or try to pull some riser so the glider is not flying at all. Okay, make sure not to let the glider, uh, not to let the glider fly at all. And uh, after you open, you get ready for the impact. Like uh, the, uh, Ajit was asking what to do after the, Reserve is open either to stand or stay inside the harness. Make sure we prepare for the impact. It means once the reserve is up above our head, we stand up in the harness and get ready for PLF, parachute landing fall. Okay, is that okay? Uh, and if you are above the ground and you land on the ground, the thing is, to signal others because I do believe that there are many people that love us that if we are in the extreme situation and we throw the reserve, they will look after us if we are fine or not. If you feel good and you're able to walk properly and you don't get hurt, then you can try to collect your paraglider and try to move to make people sure that, okay, this is the situation, uh, this is the situation, he's fine. The the pilot who threw the reserve is fine. But if you are not good and you cannot move, then make sure you're sitting over there for help. You must stay there and wait for help. Don't move. Don't try to move at all. Stay over there. Okay? Yeah. Uh, let's open the question session, I guess. Okay, cool. If yeah. they want something from here. So, anyone? Any? Okay, we have uh, TJ. Let me unmute him. Yeah, did I unmuted you? Let's. Are you able to speak? Yeah. Hi, Alice. Hello. Uh, hello. Hi, well. uh, can you uh, explain more about, or uh, you can talk about more importance of having rescue or not having rescue? Yeah, I will go about having rescue and not having rescue after this part. For sure, I'll go after after I complete the water landing session. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, guys, uh, anyone, please ping your name or raise a hand in chat. Is there anyone who have specific questions, especially covered in this? So Alish, uh, uh, since I, I guess I don't see anyone, uh, so in terms of PLF, uh, so I guess, uh, will it be covering uh, again a bit more or will you be able to explain it now, how know how to hold your hands or the position of your legs or how you should embrace the impact? Uh, I will talk about, uh, not, not uh, that one, but I'll talk more about other things like after you land in the water, land in the ground, okay, okay. what we should do. So will you be able to give uh, an idea about PLF? Yeah, normally uh, if we land with our legs, directly with our legs over the ground and we try to stand, the thing is all the impact is in our legs, right? Uh, the thing is if, our Im if the impact is on our legs, then we might uh, end up hurting ourselves very badly. But if we try to roll right after we land and we try to fall down and roll on the ground, then all the energy is distributed to our body. And like this, it's less chance to get hurt under PLF, okay? 
Right. Uh, and PLF is something which is very important after deploying reserve, you know, after collecting yeah. the, the wing, you should be ready for PLF. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, prepare for the impact. Right. Means prepare for PLF, right? So yeah. I guess uh, we have Ajit in uh, queue for Christian. Uh, let me unmute Ajit. Ajit, you are unmuted. You can go ahead. Yeah. My question is when, uh, when you are ready to roll, Mm -hmm. If you are on the slope, you can roll. But if it is flat ground, you can't roll. You can, you will have third just. Can't be rolling. Yeah, that's true. If you are actually, if you are on the slope line, it's hard to roll. But if you are in the flat line, it's possible to roll, right? Is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because if it's slope, then it might be a big slope that if you roll, then you might end up falling down in the hill, right? I understand. Yeah. To rolling, you say, just to bleed your speed, right? Yeah, yeah, just to distribute your speed among your body, if yeah. it's possible. Straight, right? if it's straight possible. you're falling down. Straight, you're falling down with the reserve deployed. So, yeah. how to roll in that case? You try, you try to stand up because the, the attachment point is right above yeah. uh, your solar point. So the yeah. solar point and a standing position. You are in a standing position, yeah. and you feel like the ground is coming, especially yeah. the flat land. Yeah. And what you do once you land over here, you try to fall down and roll over here. So the energy will be distributed all the over your body. Front side rolling will be better, right? Yes. Understood. Yes. Okay. Okay. Is that right? Got, got Thank, the you. Point. Thank you. All right. So yeah. we have one more uh, guy in queue, uh, Guru Prasad. Uh, let me unmute Guru. Um, Okay, Guru Prasad, uh, you're unmuted, go ahead. Okay, so I want to know, uh, is there any special type of uh, reserve repacking that enables faster opening of the reserve? Like there are different ways of repacking a reserve. So out of those, which is there a study which suggests that if we do repacking in a particular fashion, then uh, uh, you would be able to... Uh, uh, open the reserve faster after throwing you can open the reserve faster my why i come up to this question is i recently saw a video where in uh, it was suggested that uh, while you are repacking at the final stage you make a slight mess of the leading edge i'm saying slight mess of the leading edge yeah i do understand yeah. faster uh, opening is that true what is your take on that okay mm, let me tell you one thing uh, there are different models of reserve and there are different uh, different types of reserve packing style. Okay, there it will be it will be talked in another session for sure because there is one more guy coming to talk about the reserve packing techniques. But just to answer his question very very shortly, I prefer to pack according to the manual of that reserve. Just to answer you shortly. Because they know because during the sock test, we are looking after some videos that when the uh, when the reserve was dropped from a helicopter, it opened during the first test and it landed properly. On the second test, it did not open the same reserve because of different packing way, packing style. So it's better to pack your reserve according to the manual. Is that okay? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, so we don't have uh, any any other questions, guys. Uh, TJ, yeah, uh, let me unmute TJ. TJ, go ahead. Yeah, uh, well mentioned, Alice. Uh, I have a question again uh, uh, to having a rescue. At what level? I mean, what recommendation from you that what you'll suggest uh, to which reserve at what level they should have? I mean, at beginner level when uh, uh, started paragliding and what kind of reserve we should have or uh, let's say you said acrobatic also in acrobatic also what kind of rescue we should have you know so what is important I mean at least we should have okay uh, got that so just to clear your idea thank you TJ for question uh, I talked with Mr. Badri sir and he was talking to me about there are some other instructor they will come to talk more about packing and everything but uh, to, to talk about the level of pilots uh, normally 
I will recommend my students to take a round reserve, classical reserve for beginner, uh, beginner level, okay? Because I'm sure they don't know how to control the reserve parasite at this level. Once you, once you improve your flying skill and you are into aerobatics, especially you and uh, other pilots, you are trying to do aerobatics, it's more better if you take uh, one Rogallo, it's, if it's affordable, okay, and one uh, round reserve. There are base systems, but they're, they're really expensive. I do believe it's, it's not for all the pilots and it has very dis uh, several disadvantages that uh, it will, we, if you fall inside the lines and we cannot open the base canopy or it's very hard to use it. The thing is to have, for me, I will take one Rogallo and one, one round reserve for training aerobatics. Is that okay? Perfect. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Square is fine. Square is also like uh, it's it's good now. I see just a just a comment over there. Square Reserve is also fine. It's also one of the pull down apex. There, I have a Square Reserve. I have Octagon, and it's working same like a round reserve. It's fine. Just the thing is, it's a little bit expensive, and the sync rate is perfect. I love that reserve. Yeah, it's a new technology coming, so why not use that? It's, it's yeah. more stability on that, so it's better than a round one. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I wanted to give that message. Uh, I mean, at least what kind of rescue they should have, and it's nice. Yeah, at least at least round one. So. Thank you. That's yeah. perfect. Thank you. That's perfect. Cool. We have a couple of more questions. Uh, I think I'll take uh, one uh, last question from uh, Shian and we'll again cover a couple of sections and then uh, unlock the questions part. So, uh, Sean, go ahead. Uh, hi, Alice. Hi. Hello, hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, nice to meet you. Yes, sir. So, I have a question about like a little bit confusion and I'm um, just want to ask some questions. Yeah. Uh, so, what should be the level of experience for a pilot to indeed follow SIV course the right way? Okay, no, got that. Okay. Uh, to in order to join SIV course, I will I will recommend the pilot to take it at, as uh, fast as possible because they will know how to uh, control their canopy and they get confident over, under their canopy. You know, it's very good. But normally, I suggest right after 60 flights or 100 flights, they can, they can join an SIV course. For my students, I will teach uh, some of the basic maneuvers after 25 flights. So I have uh, one question, another one question. Uh, can that be a different from pilot to pilot because of difference in their skills, talents, or drive, etc.? That's true. Uh, we can have... a. Uh, uh, there, there can be there, there can be difference between the level of pilots and uh, the way we teach also differs from the level of pilot we teach. Like if you want to uh, going back to SIV course, it's better if you talk talk with the next session because there's a there's another instructor coming who will talk about the SIV course. Yeah, okay. right. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. you're welcome. Cool. All right. So let's, uh, Alish, let's go ahead with the rest of the session and we'll, uh, there are a couple of more guys in the queue for Q&A and we'll take those guys as well uh, and after that, is it? Okay. okay. Uh, just to end up about the rescue deployment procedure, we have, uh, uh, we have different situation. Once we deploy our reserve parachute, we also, if you're in the ground, we signal other people and let's say, I will cover more of this to the pilots who are training above the water now. Once we, are, we, once we land in the water, what happens is many pilots, we find they start to panic. Panic means giving the hope away. You know, they start to fight with the water, then they start to drink water once the, when they're training and they're inside the water. But the most important thing is if we know how to deal with this problem properly, we can save our life. Even we don't have a life jackets. I, I recommend you to take life jackets, but if we don't have a life jackets even, then we can protect our life very easily. But how? 
if we see our harness there's a back protector made of foam or there's an airbag right once we are inside the water make sure don't open your clips before going into the water because at this time of situation when you are going inside the water uh, you cannot analyze because there's too much of stress going on in your brain. So just if you want to open, you can open the uh, shoulder strap over here and let go, let go the shoulder strap. And all the straps, you are going to open it once you are inside the water. It means once you land into the water, you can swim. Okay, try to open the buckles, the chest buckles first, and take your hands inside the soldier strap try to cast the harness back protector and try to bring it right above your uh, chest and try to look up okay you're just rotating the harness like this you can breathe you just need to breathe at this time and you don't need to move this is the experience uh, experience that i'm sharing because of me because when i was learning aerobatics i don't know how to swim properly so when i didn't know how to swim properly once i go into the water i relax myself never panicking again don't panic okay open your straps once you are in the water and try to cast the back protector and bring it back because if we remember once we are in the water if you have not been water this situation will come Okay, it's pushing you down because the back protector is pushing your head down. And you feel like drinking, drowning, drinking the water and you feel very hard at this situation. You start to panic, but just relax. It's very easy. Open your strap, catch it and bring it up. If you're in water, remember me. Remember this session, okay? Uh, it will help you a lot. Next situation comes once you deploy the reserve parachute if there's a strong wind and you will fall in the water. The reserve is flying at the back. Reserve is flying at the back once you are in the water. And the reserve is pushing you down very hardly like someone is, someone is catching your neck and making you uh, drink the water, you know, bringing you back and taking you inside again and again. <laughs> so once you are inside, make sure you cast the bridle at the back, there's a bridle going up to the reserve and catch it, try to turn and save yourself. You can use this reserve as a kite once you deploy the reserve, okay? This is very good for the people who are training also during the SIV courses. It's very good and never panic always, okay? Uh, if you land, it's about the water landing, okay? And if you land on the ground or tree, especially on the tree, don't try to climb down from the tree. Because at this, at this situation, the people will start to get hurt. Because um, they try to climb down the tree and they fall down from the tree. You can wait for the rescue once you're in the tree. And try to, if, if, because the tree branches are not so good, try to... Tie yourself, if there's a rope in your harness, it's more better. Try to tie yourself in one of the strongest brands and wait for the help. Okay, uh, this is all about the rescue deployment procedure. And now I would like to go for um, reserve people, the problems that people face. And the, the, uh, we can find many problems that uh, the people are not taking the reserve and not taking it into concern about the safety aspect. Any questions, guys? Uh, about the rescue deployment? Yeah. So there are a couple of guys in queue uh, for uh, Q&A. One is uh, Naveen. Maybe uh, let me um, unmute him. Naveen Chetri. Uh, Naveen Chetri, go ahead. I unmuted you. Hello, is my voice clear? Yes, yes. Yes. Hello, Alish. Uh, I would like to get your suggestion in some in a particular situation which I am imagining. Like uh, I have a deployment. If I have a deployment, 
and I have, I'm flying in the mountains and I have a deployment. I, I have a lot of height and uh, I have steerable reserve now. Okay. I have steerable reserve. I have height and now I'm, I'm descending under the reserve. Okay. So now I have two options. Like uh, uh, I am, uh, I can steer myself. I have two options. One is trees and another is slope. But uh, here I am really uncomfortable with my descent rate. Obviously, if I'm comfortable with descent rate, I will go for the plane area. But uh, I don't know much about descent rate. I'm getting really uncomfortable with my descent rate. So in such case, should I head for the trees or for the slope areas? What do you recommend? Uh, what kind of slope you mean? Like having... Plain, plain slope with trees. Not, uh, not like a very down, but not yeah. just a normal slope. Yeah. slope and another option is trees but uh, what i'm thinking that maybe if i land on a slope i will break my legs or something like that because i am really uncomfortable with my descent rate so in such case where should i head does landing in a tree will make my chances of saving my legs more or just i should go for the slope yeah it depends upon the situation you know uh, what kind of situation you are in the thing is uh, if you are if you are going for the trees, uh, I will I will look after bigger trees for sure. If I if if it's terrible, I'll try to go for bigger one because I'm sure that they're strong and good enough. And if I go for slope, yeah, I have to get ready for impact. And there's there's no nowhere around you can go. The thing is, it's up to your decision making. If you want to go out to the slope and you make a PLF parachute yes, landing fall. Yes, and actually, you are going my, to hurt, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's so my I, question. Yeah. Uncomfortable with my descent rate. I am really yeah. uncomfortable. Should I head yeah, for? I'll the choose. Trip? I'll choose. I'll choose the slope. I'll choose the slope and get ready for PLF. Okay, yeah. okay. It's really yeah. answer, un answer my if question. It, if it is a rogallo, if it is a rogallo and a yes, system. definitely. I am talking about steerable rivers, and I have a, also small questions. Yeah. That uh, small question: If I don't have a steerable reserve, yeah. and uh, something happened wrong and I deployed the reserve. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, after deploying reserve, I have a lot of height. I have heard mm -hmm. some people telling that you can maneuver, uh, even maneuver like non steerable reserve with weight shift if you have a height and a time till the impact, like little maneuverability from here That's to wrong. here. Is it possible? That's wrong. That's it might That's change a little. It might change a little, mm -hmm. but I never find uh, people staring those kind of reserve. By the weight shift. Yeah. Not possible. Yes. It's okay, that's answered my yeah. question. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Uh, we have uh, Rakesh next uh, in queue. Rakesh, go ahead. I'm at today. Hi, Alice. Hello. Uh, my question is, uh, if if uh, uh, you are uh, going through a mirror effect after yes. deployment, uh, like after. Uh, if you're going through a mirror effect uh, or what's it called down planning, uh, mm -hmm. is it possible to recover uh, from that situation uh, or what, what can be done in such a situation? Uh, yeah, it's, it's possible. It's possible. The thing is to disable your paraglider. Okay. Again, it depends upon what kind of reserve you are using. If you're using the old models reserve, they're oscillating too much. They were having pendulum effect too much. But if you see the reserve now, they are considering more into stability test. It means the reserves are not moving too much. It's not oscillating too much. If you, if you know proper technique of disabling your paraglider right after the reserve deplo deployment, okay, you can, uh, you can take this oscillation effect or mirror effect away for sure. Yeah? Is that okay? Yeah. Make sure to disable your paraglider. Sure. Don't forget it. Yeah? Uh, I have uh, more questions. Uh, yes, please. Okay. Uh, the next one is uh, uh, between a light reserve and a normal reserve. Uh, mm -hmm. What is better uh, in terms of landing in a tree? Both not. <laughs> not the both. You know, actually, the thing uh, is, uh, yeah. Is, um, uh, is it is, is it possible that if you have a light reserve, you uh, uh, you land in a, a tree, and uh, because the fabric is light, uh, it it might rip and uh, you know not hold you. That's true. 
that's true. It's it's a common sense that we can use. The thing is, if it is light, then it's uh, it's really easy to get uh, to torn away, or we can we might have many holes with the right, right reserves. And even the lines are very light, and it's very hard to take it out from the trees. Also, at that situation, we can have many problems with the light one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, one more small one. Uh... Okay, uh, I have uh, heard many people suggest a slightly oversized reserve than what your no- overall weight is, your normal flying overall weight. That's true. Uh, I will I will suggest to have a twenty to thirty percent more bigger from your weight. So if you are flying, uh, because if you see the reserve, they are uh, tested under sudden atmospheric pressure under the sea level and fifteen degrees Celsius. So on the top weight, okay? And if we take this reserve in the higher altitude, the descent rate will increase very uh, somehow. So I prefer to take a little bit uh, uh, heavier reserve, uh, no, a bigger reserve than your actual flying weight, total flying weight. Yeah? Cool, cool. Great. Thank you. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Cool. Um, we still have a couple of guys in queue. Alish, do you think the, the, uh, there are more portions to cover for you? Uh, no, not much. I can end up in five minutes later. Okay, cool. So Vijay is next. Uh, let me unmute Vijay. Uh, Vijay, you can go ahead. Vijay? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, let's uh, my question was regarding that uh, you told about the SIV. You mm-hmm. talk about 60 flights or 25 flights. Uh, 60 to 100. Yeah. 60 to 100 flight or flying hours. Flying uh, hours maximum the flying number of flights. Am I right? The, the thing is, uh, it's also about the hours and also about the flights, but I will suggest flights. Yeah. Okay. Because it's, it's uh, I about think, the flight. Uh, some people in the yeah. is what number of flight after training basic courses or from beginning? Well, if you're talking uh, about- from the uh, from the beginning, from the beginning, because I I mean SIB courses doesn't mean making full stall only. You know, as in SIB courses, we can also have a asymmetric collapse, frontal collapse, making a small pitch pendulum, so they can improve their level. It doesn't means making full stall as I doesn't means making spin or spiral dive. They can also learn some basic maneuvers that can help in their regular flying career. So normally for my students, I will teach them right after 25 flights to make asymmetric collapse, frontal collapse, base stall, each, you know, so they can improve their improve and fly confidently in the air. Is that okay? Yeah, Roger. Cool. Uh, we have Rohit up next. Rohit, call. Hi, Alish. Uh, great Hello. couple of tips when you get in the water. Just love them. Practical tips. My question is now around um, when you throw your reserve, especially let's say you are in an auto rotation state, very likely we'll see the reserve getting into the wing or getting wrapped around the wing. The first thing, of course, I'll try to do is pull using the risers back and throw it again, if I can. But often we have seen pilots not able to pull them, right? Because they are due to the pressure of the air or whatever, they're just tightened now. Now, in that case, will cutting off your lines or if you have quick outs, leaving your risers, or if you have a soft links, even cutting the links, will it help in any of this situation? And what is the right way to handle this situation? Okay. Um, normally, if we talk about auto rotation situation, I already told you that it's very hard. It's more chances that uh, the reserve goes inside the lines. Yeah. The first thing. The second thing. Once you are in the auto rotation and the line, uh, the reserve goes inside the lines. Yeah, like you said, we try to grab the riser of the uh, yeah. rescue and try to open it. Try yeah. to open it if it's possible, right? If it's not possible, yeah, we can use the uh, quick, link, quick link system because if we disable our paraglider, 
the reserve will work. But the thing is, it's very complex situation, you know. I cannot recommend this technique for the pilots because it's the time to make a decision. And uh, the thing is, if it goes wrong, then even the strength that was carrying us uh, above our head, it will go away. Okay. You know, it's very hard situation. I cannot recommend any kind of suggestion for you at this, at, at this place. Sorry. Yeah. So you have <laughs> seen a lot of these situations uh, in yeah. real life. You, you're in poker, of course. Uh, what is the typical outcome of this you have seen? The glider just continues to then auto rotation towards the ground, but because of two things together, wing and a reserve, there is enough drag and things are okay. I mean, just, just real life experience. Yeah. I, I see some people uh, in real life that they have broken their legs after, even after their reserve deployment and it, it didn't open and uh, some of them hurting themselves in the water. You know, it's, it's hard because if the reserve is not working, we cannot do anything now. You know, it's very hard. We try to fight, we try to grab the rises and try to open it if it's not mm. opening. So... There's no chance we can do it. The second reserve is a really only savior in such cases. Yes, that's why we fly with two reserve. You know, if we are, when you are training aerobatics or training some maneuver, if something goes wrong, we try to deploy another reserve. Just increasing the safety level. Thanks, brother. You're welcome. You're welcome. Cool. Uh, so next, uh, TJ, you have something to say? DJ, I unmuted you. See if you can unmute yourself. We can't hear you. Yeah, I had a question, but it, he cleared me. Uh, but again, uh, like Navin had a question regarding uh, uh, Rogallo, using Rogallo, and then uh, he was scared uh, if he has a high descent rate. And then he was asking, uh, should I go for a slope or a tree or all that, right? So... Uh, if you have a Rogallo, I mean, he has a Rogallo, then why not uh, flare, you know? And then uh, get, the, uh, get the minimum sink rate. Actually, with the Rogallo, the flare is not working. If you see the Rogallo, the flare is not working. Do you hear Tizi Hello. Hello, hello. Yeah, you can hear me? I guess there are some connection issues from TJ's end. TJ? Yeah, yeah, uh, we can see Alice, you. Can you... Uh, again, uh, I think we lost TJ again. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I guess... Just the uh, thing is, we cannot flare with the Rogallo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Rogallo, it doesn't flare like a glider, right? Uh, yeah, you, no. We cannot flare it. So yeah. that's a disadvantage. Uh, you, everyone thinks we, since we have break, we can flare Rogalo easily, right? So yeah. many of the guys think. So uh, yeah, that's not the case actually. Yeah. Uh, so we yes. have uh, Manoj uh, next. Uh, okay. Let me unmute Manoj. Can you speak? Looks like it's not unmuted properly. Let me unmute him again. Uh, Man Manoj, can you unmute yourself? Yeah, thanks, oh. Rakhil. So my question kind of got answered, but I'll still uh, go ahead and ask it. Uh, I wanted to know that you know when the reserve is deployed. I mean, how important is it to deactivate the main? And if at all I have to deactivate it, how do I do it? Do I pull the C riser? And uh, one option is to pull the C riser. The second option is to uh, deactivate through brake lines. So what would be the right technique? Okay. Uh, it's very necessary to disable your paraglider. First thing. Okay. In order to disable your paraglider, the most easiest way is to wrap your brake lines. Okay. You can wrap in your hand and try to pull it as hard as possible. Okay. If not, you can also use your C risers to uh, disable your paraglider. And if you, if you have enough height, I will suggest you to cast the, cast the glider and try to bring it to your knees and keep it, uh, keep it over there. Why? Because if we don't disable our paraglider, if we don't disable our paraglider, if it is very easy to get pendulum effect, oscillation effect, and the paraglider is moving 
in a pendulum format and you hit the ground in more hard manner. Okay, you, you hit it very hardly. So it is very necessary to disable your paraglider. Thank you. Excellent. Is that Thank okay? you. Yeah, perfectly fine. Can I ask one more uh, question? Okay. Please, please. Uh, uh, you know, I, that's not more of a question, just an inquiry kind of a thing. Uh, mm -hmm. I've done SIVs, but, uh, you know, I mean, like, I don't see a reserve deployment as a part of SIV unless until you go ahead and request it. I mean, don't you think so that it should be like more of a, a part of SIV as other maneuvers? Okay, uh, just to go for it. The thing is, in my SIV course, I will keep it as a part of my SIV course. But I don't know about the other instructor because they have different way of teaching, you know. But for me, it's a part of my SIB course. So the student can feel how is it to deploy the reserve parachute and they could uh, learn how to disable their paraglider in that kind of situation, you know. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. So nice. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, next, we have, uh, yeah, Rakesh. There are a couple of more guys in the queue. Rakesh? Go ahead. Okay, Alisha, uh, my, my next question is, uh, can you comment about uh, the steerability option of the Rigalo, uh, Rogallo Reserve? Uh, I also have a Rogallo, and uh, I'll let you know. The thing is, once you throw the Rogallo, it's very easy uh, to get twist over Rogallo. Now the Rogallo is designed in half break format. So they are packed already in a half break system. So once you throw the Rogallo, uh, their descent rate is like a normal reserve parachute. I have Beamer too. Uh, my descent rate is not like a normal reserve parachute once I throw my Rogallo, okay? But after Beamer 3, they make this half break system. When you throw the reserve, it will fall like a normal reserve very softly, okay? With 5.5, less than 5.5 meter per second uh, sink rate. And again, once you throw it uh, to stair, you have to disable your paraglider. Okay, disable your paraglider, bring it down or use the quick release system. Normally who are using a quick release system now have a problem. So it's better to use normal, normal carabiners, right? That we can find many, many problems with the quick release carabiners. So you can, you can bring all your gliders towards your knees and now you have to open the twist. It's very easy to get twist, okay? You have to open the twist and open half brake system and you can use it, steer, steer it properly. And this, the sink rate is very low. The Rogallo now, the sink rate is very low. Trust me, it's better than our, uh, some of the landing we make. It's very safe. And, and uh, in comparison, the Beamer 2, uh, like you said, uh, it, it doesn't have that uh, half brake system. So. What's the uh, I don't I don't really know the descent rate, but the thing is with the beamer two, when I open the beamer two, if there's a strong wind, it is being drifted towards the wind. And if we are going towards the mountain, it's more dangerous. Right? Sure. If the wind is hitting here and if it if I cannot control, if I cannot turn my rogallo properly, then it's going towards the uh, mountain and it's making more complex the situation. Okay. So, uh, so you 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 saying that uh, if if there is enough height that uh, you gathered the glider uh, and then you uh, take the the controls out and then yeah. you can steer it. So it's not necessary to cut away the wing. You can still steer it with with say say most of the wing gathered. You can you have to gather your wing for sure. All the wings on your leg. All of it has to be. Yeah 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 yeah. Sure. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Uh, so we have two more guys in the queue. Uh, Vijay, go ahead. Mm, can you hear me, Alice? Yes. yes, I can. Better to see your face. This is <laughs> so with my life experience last year. Sorry? This is with my life experience of the reserve deployment last year. Okay. So I deploy my reserve, uh -huh. but I went into the lot of twist with the glider. All right. And it was not after you have many twisted, maybe twenty-five plus twisted in the risers. Yeah. It is not possible 
to use your brake to Brakes, collect yeah. the main line yeah and what is the solution then uh if you are in this kind of situation let's see you are in a twist because you are you are in a spin or stall based situation already it means your glider is already disabled if you remember right it it goes into twist because you are in a big spin right and uh, it, was the glider open already yeah it was uh, 50% open i i am flying two liner and yeah. you know the amount of energy in the two liners you want to be open yeah. how strong they are yeah uh yeah it's hard to collect the, the if, whole if bunch of line yeah if it was if it was uh, with 25 twist then it is very hard to open you try to pull some risers or some lines very hardly and if it is not working there's no any solution for it you have to go down in the same format yeah that what i did yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's the same format we try but we try our best to disable but i try my best possible, i try my best i was pulling with my both hands a full bunch of lines i got over yeah. some and these two liners without the, there's no proper grip it was very i had enough height to do all this i was falling down from 2000 meter above the okay. above the ground so i had enough time to do all this thing but eventually it didn't work then in the half of the way i left it and this went with it as it was going all right that's that's a that's a good idea that you okay. deploy the reserve yeah. to solve this situation the thing is you also have the some kind of handle at like the b rises right oh, did you try by pulling that handle hardly strongly uh, everything twisted nothing works it's like uh, everything right. twisted yeah. together it become one whole block yeah, nothing yeah. works yeah i can understand that's a hard situation even I I, if i were you i'll i'll do the same i just wait for the ground i guess in these cases if you have quick outs uh, that will be a much better solution is it do yeah. you think if you have quick out it's best solution best no solution. but just now you spoke something about the problem with the quick out so yeah, i there are like many problems what is what are the problems if you see the videos uh, of some tandems or some people there they forget to lock the safety lock the that's kind of red lock and the, it open by itself you know it's opening by itself and they some of them have to cost their life of the quick out i tried to take quick out but i was psychologically uh, it did not make me feel secure so i t- i take it out also after seeing this kind of videos yeah in my case i will consider that is not a problem of the quick out if yeah, you forget yeah. to do something you will you will forget to put your chest belt you will also forget to put your leg belts not even Understand? that there were other problems also there were really yeah, other problems what are the other problems i want to know that this is not a problem for me if i am i am forgetting something to put in my equipment i am not yeah not allowed to fly i have to just quit that's my stand actually so i need to see that uh, i i forget it but i need to see i need to go through it about yeah. this quick release system yeah especially in quick out there are certain problems if you try to screw it uh, you know if the if you are trying to when you attach the risers if you are screwing it uh, not properly then there are high chances of it's coming out but again we have to discuss in a different session yeah okay, yeah so yeah we'll go ahead with uh, the last one question with ajit and then we'll move on we are like yeah, sure, fairly sure. short on the time sure so ajit Go ahead. Yeah. Hi, sir. Hello. Uh, my question is, sir, you must have having thousands of hours in your logbook. Have you ever come across real when you wanted to open the reserve, not for the demonstration, not for the this, but have you ever gone through? If yes, how you saved yourself first time? Uh, that was a very good question i have been, i have deployed my reserve uh, by myself for four times one of the situation was uh, above the ground one of the situation above the ground when i was doing helicopter okay it's acrobatic maneuver when i was doing helicopter and i was trying to put twister i get lot of twist and i try to deploy my reserve i there there i had a rogallo and uh, i throw my rogallo it didn't open at all okay i try to sec it it didn't open so there was my round reserve i open it 
and I disabled my paraglider. It did open for sure. And I disabled my paraglider. I bring all the things to my knees and I was praying for God that I didn't get hurt. And I was very happy that I didn't because uh, after I landed over the tree and I was like feeling and I was in the next simulator. When I touched with my feet, I was already in the ground. Very safe, very good. And uh, when I pulled my glider, everything come to my arms. I took it, I pack it, and I went to fly again. That was one of my situation. I get a twist and I throw the reserve. And Second what was situation. your descent rate? Descent rate. Ah, I did. It Drop. was like six or seven years ago. I really don't. Uh, I really don't know. Was it, it fast? It was like enough? maybe four, four, four or five meter, five meter per second or four meter per second. I I went and cast the branch of a tree. I remember four or five meter per second. That was your first experience. Uh, yes. Yes. Good. Yeah. You give my answer. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Cool. Uh, so, yeah, we have more hands raising. Uh, maybe, Alish, maybe you can go ahead finishing the session and then we'll go again back to Q&A. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, normally, we all know about the... I already talked about the decision-making process, how to open the paraglider, what not to do, uh, what to do when, if the reserve parachute didn't open and uh, prepare for the impact signal others in case of water landing. I already talked about this. Now, the problems are... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sorry. Oh, that is from someone else. I'm, uh, please mute so yourself, guys. The problems now we find is on our safety checks. When you're flying, I don't know how many pilots have the habit of making pre-flight check and we check our rescue handle. This has become very big issues uh, in last years. I can, we can see many kind of videos um, on social media that many people forget to check their reserve pin and uh, they get deployed. Uh, they, de they deploy their reserve right after they fly. Yeah. So please, guys, make sure that you check your rescue handle, especially beginner pilots, intermediate pilot, advanced pilot. We have this habit. Okay, we must look after this. Check your make always the part of pre-flight check. Check your reserve pin. Second thing is for tandem pilots who are flying tandems, especially the pilots who keep their reserve on the same side when they are doing a reverse lunge. There's a friction going to the passenger harness, and we can find many pilots. Uh, they get their reserve open before the takeoff. So make sure you keep your reserve handle opposite, opposite to your uh, reverse launch. If you are making right uh, launch, if you are turning on the right, make sure you keep the rescue handle on the left. So there is no friction of anything unless your passenger grabs their handle and open it. You know, I find it situation also. Uh, and the thing, other thing is, I can find many pilots not using reserve on tandems. I was also traveling to India and I find many pilots not using a rescue parachute. Guys, it will cost your life one day. So it's better, it's not too late. Let's take a reserve parachute at your back, certified one on your weight range and let's, let's bring it to fly. I know the reserve will not fly with you. Uh, you're not going to fly the reserve, but at least take it. It will save your life. And uh, the thing is, when you're flying tandem, if you see the spader bar and the connection point between uh, riser and the spader bar, there are two loops. Many people are inserting, inserting the bridles on the main carabinas. Think, if the main carabina will break away or loop, on the main carabiner breakaway, will the reserve activate? It will not activate for sure. So make sure to use uh, stainless steel on the T-bar. Right uh, below, there is a loop. There are two loop, Two The spider bar have two loops now. Use it there and use proper stainless maloon, like 7mm 
or more if you can, you know, at least seven mm on both sides. Okay, and to also do normal pilots, if you're not using melon, try to use the melon and please use the reserve because it will save your life for sure. Please, um, let's not make this as an issue for your survival, okay? We fight with reserve, not without reserve. Thank you. Cool, thanks Alish. Uh, I guess uh, that's the end of the session for you. The, the points? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, then uh, it's a Q&A session again back. So yeah, we have uh, Rohit waiting for Q&A. Rohit, go ahead, I have unmuted you. Yeah, hi, uh, Alish. Hello. Thank you for, for very, very nice and important uh, information. Actually, I just want to ask you something about a real uh, uh, life experience, what I've had. Uh, during mm -hmm. one of my flights so the thing is like i was flying xc and in uh in a particular spot uh there was a very shitty uh, like it's a place uh, with a shitty air and my height was also not much above the ground maybe about 250 or 200 meters on the ground from the hill and uh, the thing was like i did not uh, had any kind of a collapses. So just suddenly my wings started going all over the place and I was controlling all the time uh, my wing. And that is the reason I did not think about my reserve. Like now I know like after the ex uh, after, after that experience and uh, I personally feel now that I should have because I got lucky and I didn't uh, hurt myself. But the thing is like I was controlling all the time and suddenly I realized that I started seeing this free line and I uh, touched the ground only because my canopy, you know, the main canopy was open and I kept it open, struggling. And that is the reason why the impact was not so hard and I uh, kind of, you know, luckily survived that thing. So in that kind of a situation, what do you, what do you suggest? Like, because we also know that we have to disable the main canopy, right? Like, so once you open, so if I open at that particular height, I don't know, like, so I was like a little confused and I... To be honest, I did not even think about uh, the reserve at that particular day because I was my canopy was open. It was only going all over the place and I was just kind of controlling it. And then suddenly I find myself on the ground. Luckily, uh, <laughs> didn't uh, you know, I damage much and so. So what is your uh, take on it? Okay. Okay. If you remember, we are supposed to fly a paraglider. Not a paraglider is supposed to fly us. The first thing, okay, if you cannot control this kind of situation, I already mentioned on le number three, if there are some fear or some situation that you are not able to control your paraglider, okay, you're not able to control at all, depending your, upon your height. Right now, you have a 200 meter and think you're, you're, you're lucky that you, there was no hurt for you. There, it did not hurt you. But the situation was to throw the reserve. And the thing was, you are not adapted. You are not mentally trained. So this is why we are sharing this kind of information. You know, Thanks to Badri, sir, for making this kind of session for all the pilots. You know, yes. Like this, we are saving most of, our, most of the people's life. You know? So just the thing is, we have to, this time, in this quarantine time, we have to train mentally and prepare ourselves mentally if this kind of situation comes then we have to deploy the reserve yeah but this is a time that, to train. that particular action only came uh, into my mind because you know like uh, from the starting when i started flying it was always like kind of a suggestion that when uh, the canopy is still flying you should try to control the canopy and try to fly away uh, from that's the situation true. rather than thinking of uh, uh, like deploying your parachute. Like, that's uh, that's true. Parachute. That's true. Because so that is the, actually the reason that my action came from that learning what I've had. And that is the reason was I was, uh, you know, so busy. Although like this was my mistake that I did not think about, you know, like uh, uh, deploy my reserve. But that I, I got to know later once because I was too busy to uh, to correct uh, whatever was happening. So it like it is, I had a, a lot of... Uh, discussions about that particular situation so uh, like till now i don't know what was happening there because i left 
uh, my breaks in between just to let it fly the canopy it didn't but it, it was going all over again and so my reason why i did not deploy was only because it was flying my my main canopy is still flying so i was like try to control the canopy so i do understand the thing is you might have hit some turbulent great turbulent in the air and you might have felt the situation okay the thing is you if you are not able to control it and if you are thinking you are going to hurt yourself very hardly because i know even in the auto rotation it's flying but you and your body is not adapted to understand what is auto rotation what is asymmetric collapse maybe at that level at that level maybe you didn't know that maybe no, it was not auto rotation for spiral. sure yeah uh, it was not auto rotation uh, for sure like it was it was flying only it was going from one side to the other the sometimes it is going into the uh, you know like the helico like half helico kind of a thing but it was going like way too much it was a very turbulent air like that particular pocket i think uh, yesterday jilish uh, has also mentioned about that particular uh, place uh, like here behind the i can understand you can you yeah. could have end up in parasitical stall or uh, turbulent you know and yeah, still the glider you feel like it's above your head but it's not flying it's normal at that time yeah. maybe sometime you have to keep your hands up i really don't know the situation yeah, also, next time yeah, next yeah. time you must take care okay yeah yeah, yeah. okay uh, i find okay is that okay no so i just want to know so like if that close to the ground i should have uh, like according to you i should have thrown my uh, like deployed my parachute yeah, yeah because if you if you cannot control i did control. not have time to correct or disable my main canopy but i the better would be like i i should have actually deployed my uh, i'll parachute. i'll ask you one question just to make sure okay what is yeah. the maximum height you will deploy your reserve then yeah normally 100 100 like it should be at least 100 Uh, meter, but for me, I will deploy it till the last level to save my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's the decision that. for me. Yeah, so it's better to deploy it, not to get hurt. Yeah, yeah, okay, it will can. not hurt you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, look, okay. thank you. Very well said, Alish. Uh, yeah. And we have next Rajiv and Q. Rajiv, uh, go ahead. Rajiv, uh, I can't hear you. You you are unmuted, and uh, I think there is some issue with your connection. Still can't hear you, Rajiv. Maybe you can uh, ping your question in chat room. Uh, okay. All right. So uh, th there is another question from the YouTube live, which uh, while uh, guys are watching. Uh, so someone's asking uh, if using a bigger reserve uh, increases the opening time as well. or delays the opening time what is your take on it uh, that's that that doesn't affect any opening time the reserve size will not affect the opening time for sure because it all depends upon the packing way and the okay. situation you throw the reserve if you are throwing the reserve in a spiral dive think it will open very fast if you it's big and uh, if it is small also at the same time but the sink rate might affect not the opening time but sink rate might affect if it is smaller uh, it it will go down slow uh, smaller it will go down very fast but if it is bigger it will sink quite uh, slower okay cool cool yeah. so yeah that answers the question okay the rajiv's question i got it on the chat uh, why did alish uh, alish's roglo not open when he threw it yeah. there was very nice question <laughs> yeah we we are uh, right after i purchased my uh, after i purchased rogalo it was beamer 2 and my instructor i i didn't know how to pack the rogalo at that time it was like 6 or 7 7 years ago 7 years ago okay and i didn't know how to pack the rogalo and my instructor said okay there is a half brake system you can use a half brake system so you'll fall normal like a a uh, normal reserve you know you'll you'll descend normal in a normal way and okay okay let's try and i had packed that reserve the half brake system okay half brake system and we tried packing and we packed the rogalo and i open it i think that was the reason it didn't open one reason second reason maybe i was in the spin and when i threw the reserve 
it did not open because there was not enough airflow to go inside the panels. Two things. That two things might be the reason. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. Cool. Uh, any more questions, guys? Uh, this is going to be the last question or any more? Uh, right uh, now, I see MLSR from Bilaspur. I'd like to thank him for coming here. Okay. Thank you, MLSR from Bilaspur. And thank you for the calendar you sent us for Nepal Acro team. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, thank you. Okay. Okay, we have more questions again coming. Uh, we have uh, questions from Naveen Chetri again. Uh, yeah, please. Naveen, can you unmute yourself? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, my question is basically regarding specific to the front rescue system. Uh, All right. Okay. If I deploy through the front rescue and the, those bridles are connected in my carabiners, right? So yes. is it doing the PLF or uh, is hard or is, is it even possible to do the PLF or, or it's 100% sure that I will land on my back? Because in my cases, if I am some doing some, uh, if I'm trying something new, like agro maneuvers and something like that new, which I have not done, uh, I carry two reserves, one in front mm -hmm. and uh, one in back because my harness only have one, one pocket for the reserve. So I'm asking because where should I, because I have one new reserve and one old one, one is second, second hand and one is new one. So where should I put my new one? So I will have more chances in such case in front or in back. That's why. Okay. Uh, I will suggest there, there are many reserve, you know, like we can have a reserve on uh, below our harness at the side, also in the front container, everything have their advantage and disadvantage. So if we talk about the uh, advantage of having ro uh, reserve in the front, that you can assess the handle, rescue handle from both sides very easily. Yeah, exactly. That's why, that's this, why is the, I, this, is, this is one advantage. But the thing is, if your reserve is not connected on the soldier strap, then you have to land on your back. This is the disadvantage. It's your, it's your yeah? view, I will land on my back. If yeah, it's, yeah. But if, if you think the reserve on the side, side of your uh, container, you uh, you can hold it only assist with only one hand either right or left right okay, yes, with yes, only yes. one hand so there are advantages and disadvantages to just to answer your question you have to land on your back now because it's hanging over here and it's very yeah. hard to stand up because i know the bridles are coming yes, right yes, from yes. here it's very hard to stand but we so, try our best yeah yeah so so it's better to put my the new reserve which i have more chances in the back with the shoulder steps connecting yeah here. it's it's yeah. better to have it in the solar strap so you can stand up and prepare for the impact and make a plf for it okay oh okay. thanks Th thanks yeah thanks. cool so next uh, one last this is going to be the last of uh, q a rakesh go ahead uh, uh it's more of uh, something that i would like to add from uh, one reserve deployment experience uh i i had uh, deployment uh, two years back and uh, there's two points I would like to make. Uh, one uh, was that uh, like what happened in my uh, incident was I, I got a, uh, I was on uh, full bar. I had started full bar to uh, you know, start a transition. Uh, and uh, I, I got a collapse and, uh, and the, the wing uh, dived on the left. And... Uh, and uh, I was slightly delayed in releasing the speed bar. Now I'm sure everybody has the, uh, the everybody knows and everybody has the instinct of, uh, you know, as soon as there is some, something happening with the glider, uh, you, you want to release the speed bar to control the wing. Everybody uh, does that, but I would say, uh, uh, I, you, you can't stress it enough, the, the importance of, uh, uh, how uh, uh, quick and how uh, clear you have to be to release the speed bar as soon as possible there is a collapse or incident. Uh, because that, that slight delay uh, in releasing the speed bar 
my my uh, uh, wing uh, like i tried to correct uh, the collapse but my my glider was already going into auto rotation this, yeah. this was one one point that i wanted to add so maybe it can help uh, some of the people if, if there's something similar and uh, another thing uh, would like to add was again uh, stressing on the plf uh now i i had uh, I, i could see where uh i i was uh, going now i try i gathered my wing and uh, there was a little pendulum effect but i could see that uh, ground is approaching i didn't have too much height uh, uh and and uh, i had barely managed to uh, gather my wing and i hit the ground so uh, i did not uh, give importance to uh getting my feet out of my pod and uh, being ready for the plf and uh i uh, with the the impact i i uh, uh, fractured two vertebras so the, the difference is between walking away from a, a, a reserve deployment and uh, you know uh, being uh, i i luckily survived it could have been a fatality so uh the plf is very 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 important people should uh, you know uh, people should uh, i would suggest people should practice it practice it a few times every season and remind yourself plf 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 as soon as there is a reserve handle you have to think of you have to think of the plf thank you that's true thank you for a suggestion it was very nice thank you rakesh it was more than a question thank you thank you thank you guys and yeah alish uh, very well uh, explained everything good session uh, you know from starting the the point where the decision uh, where you start uh, deploying the reserve to the where it's landing and all the scenarios uh, very well covered and everything explained properly very informative session thanks a lot alish uh, you and yeah, you're uh, welcome <laughs> yeah from here i'll op- open up the chat for everyone and also badri if you like to add anything yeah um thank you subhash ji for coming and watching our sessions uh, hope you are gaining some knowledge <clears throat> you are a great support for us uh, in uh, himachal and uh, it is working for us thank you so much and thank you alish for addressing uh, such a beautiful session and uh, it's very very clear crisp and cool you have answered all the questions and i'm sure you'll be a great asset for our community in coming upcoming sessions uh, i want you to come back for more and uh, thanks to uh, clint john for hosting such a lovely session and thanks to everybody and muted everyone thank you guys can thank you guys thank you thank you so please continue to share things okay it was very nice thank you alish thank you if you have some question you can dm me okay Yeah, yeah, thanks for uh, thanks to uh, thank you very much thank you for welcome everyone thank you guys thank you thank you so please share the thank you